as I think Jim Jordan of Ohio would, and as I'm confident that Andy Biggs uh, of Arizona would. Welcome back to the program. Good to be with you, Sean. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. By the way, and you know, there is this backlash. Um, we're getting a lot of backlash all around the country. Uh, Jim, in your state, you yeah. had anti-lockdown protesters swarming the state house. Uh, Governor DeWine has now announced the reopening of Ohio. In Vegas, the mayor fired back over the insane coronavirus shutdown. Uh, Carolyn uh, Goodman called on the Democratic uh, go- governor out there to reopen non-essential businesses shuttered during the pandemic. The president's going to point out today, you know, Christy Nome never shut down South Dakota. Idaho yep. now is back up and running. And by the way, the country didn't fully shut down or else New York wouldn't have had anything in any grocery store. But the stores were packed. The workers were putting the food on and stocking the food every day. Same with drug stores and the truckers are on the road and the president gave yep. tribute to them. So Jim Jordan. Yeah, well, no, but the one entity that's not back to work is the United States Congress. I mean, we yeah, why aren't they at work? That's a great question. Yeah, well, all, all these task forces doing great, great work out there, but the task force that's supposed to address big issues in our nation is the United States Congress. And Nancy Pelosi can take cheap shots at the president, who's doing a great job, but she can take cheap shots at the president from San Francisco, but she can't put together a plan for us to come back to work. So we're talking about going back and starting to do the work of the American people. And I tell you, who else is doing the work of the American people? You see the memo Bill Barr put out, Sean? where he said, hey, hey, you can't discriminate against people going. If you're going to let people go to the grocery store and exercise social distance, for goodness sake, they can go to church on Easter Sunday in their cars and not have to be harassed by a governor like they did in Kentucky. So that's why you're seeing people show up at these state houses in protest, because they're sick of the ridiculous things, and they understand it's time to go back to work, and that's exactly what the president's going to talk about tonight. Uh, And I think, look, there's a lot of states are going to be easier. Arizona is going to be easier than New York or or Nevada and Vegas in particular, Nevada. Right, uh, Congressman Biggs? Yes. Yes, Sean. I mean, look, uh, we we want to get back and there's going to be a rally here on Monday. I mean, people want to get out and work. And uh, look, if you've got marijuana dispensaries, for Pete's sakes, that can can social distance and you've got grocery stores why can't you open up your retail shops and get people back to work and that's that's really important it's important here uh you can social distance in restaurants uh you know uh, las vegas as you said that's a really tough row right now because 90 percent of of gaming and and casino folks which is all of las vegas they're out of work so we've got to start bringing this stuff back uh, uh, much sooner rather than later. And I, I worry about rural hospitals which are starting to shut down because they can't do elective surgeries. Uh, Arizona can open up. Arizona can open up today. Well, I'm looking at, uh, you're right, Kentucky, they had protesters. I mean, the dopey governor there uh, wanted to take down people's license plates if they showed up yep. for drive-up services for Easter Sunday. I mean, what a, what a dope. Uh, Ralph Northam is announcing in Virginia... You know, the, Mr. Well, first we'll deliver the baby, and then we'll make sure oh, yeah. the baby's comfortable, and then we'll let the mother decide if the baby lives or dies. Uh, what That idiot. Anyway, and then Michigan, you had the protesters uh, at the state capitol. There were a ton of people there. Now, more is happening. The Pennsylvania House and Senate voted to overturn uh, the governor's lockdown order there. Um, and I'm telling you, people have had it. I think this is now uh, the American people have hit their maximum, you know, stay at home orders and i think they're saying all right well we'll wear masks we'll use purell we'll wear gloves but leave us alone jim no i yeah no i i think you're exactly right there's something about the american people we value this thing called freedom i always say there's a reason that our caucus we pick the name freedom caucus because it matters it's important and americans instinctively understand that and they understand look this is a tough time i mean you know better than anyone sean you're right there in new york and they know certain things have to happen, but they know that it can be done in a way that protects fundamental liberty. Why is it when, when you see these, these, these tickets going to people who are, who are going to church, they're getting ticketed, but there's someone there filming it? So I'm wondering, did the press get ticketed too? Because, you know, the press is part of the it's, – it's freedom to assemble, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and freedom of the press. Was the press ticketed too? It never seems like they are. And maybe that maybe that would send the press a message if they, if they got treated like everyone else. So we need to respect all of the First Amendment. And I think Americans understand that, and that's why they're protesting. 
Well, you know that a lot of a lot of countries are digitally uh, using new digital surveillance tools to track and monitor individuals. Uh, we know it's happening uh in the uk we know in asia south korea china taiwan we know that they didn't seek permission from people before tracking their cell phones to identify suspected coronavirus patients uh we know in europe uh some of those countries monitor citizens movement by tapping telecommunications data we know that american officials are drawing cell phone location data from mobile advertising firms to track presence of crowds and Apple and Google recently announced plans to launch a voluntary app that help officials can use to reverse engineer sick patients' recent whereabouts. Uh, I'm not comfortable with any of that stuff. Andy Biggs. Yeah, no, that is that is so far outside of, of freedom and what Americans expect. Scares the hell out of me. Yeah, absolutely. This is such an abuse of, of, of who we are and the rights that we are. So, So the reality is... You got to pull the plug on that. You can't let that happen. And you have to say, we're going to trust Americans to make their own decisions and understand that freedom comes with risk. And we're going to make some choices. And they may not, might not always be the best choices, but you know what? There'll be choices made by free people. Hey, uh, Jim Jordan, I didn't particularly like uh, all my text messages. As you know, they were released <laughs> to the public. I mean, I, I had no say in a judge and do, some dopey judge releasing all my text messages. They didn't yeah, ask my no. permission. They sure you didn't. know, no, that's why. That's why. Look, you got to err on the side of freedom. We got to. We got to understand how serious this is. And like I said, we all know that. And and in in a difficult time, sometimes there's there's actions you got to take. But we got to do it long term in a way that's consistent with freedom. Again, I come back to the attorney general. It's why his memo two days ago was so darn important. He says you got to narrowly tailor things if you're going to infringe on people's liberty. This is this is long court precedent here. You have to narrow, narrowly tailor it. You you got to be real cognizant of people's freedoms and and even in difficult times like we face right now. So I appreciate that and we got to respect that and remember that as we move forward. I went over a plan to, for example, and this is very New York uh, specific, but I think it's going to be every city. They're going to have to think about. You know, baseball season and is now supposed to be upon us and football season not far behind. And what I said to the governor of New York, I said, I'd like to see Yankee Stadium and City Field open, not outdoor concert venues open. You got bigger challenges for, you know, like Madison Square Garden or, you know, domed ar arenas, but outdoor arenas, for example. What if would you guys if everybody has to have their temperature taken before they're admitted? And what if they even in New York, for example, you go to Yankee Stadium. My choice is either I can't go or I have to wear a mask and gloves. I'll wear the mask and gloves. You know, they sell hot dogs and chicken fingers, but they can't sell popcorn. Every single player, everybody that works in the locker room, every ticket taker, every food handler would have to have a real COVID-19 test. You have to sip your drinks with a straw. Um, maybe start with every other seat, but. Uh, if the choice is mine, I'll wear the mask and gloves and go. I would I would accept that for the interim, knowing what we're dealing with. What do you think, uh, Andy Biggs? You know, I agree with you, Sean. Uh, that that they're part of the fabric of our society as well. I mean, the they're part of the norm, and you got to start restoring the norm. And uh, I I I just get back to this whole thing that Americans are smart enough to take care. Uh, of of public health issues and be careful and we we can be careful and they should start finding ways to open this up i mean they were talking at one point of playing all the baseball games here in arizona which i would love except for we couldn't go see any of the games they were going to do them in in the empty stadiums around here that 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 does not bring us back to the norm and we have to get back there i think we can i think look people. i'm not a doctor um this is not my area of expertise but if everybody had to wear a mask and by the way, you get your team emblem on the mask. Maybe the, maybe the stadiums give out the mask. Maybe the teams give out the masks and gloves for people. But if they test every worker that works there, every player, so the players aren't, you know, contracting this them, and passing it amongst themselves, and you have to eat, you know, you can take your mask off, take a bite of your hot dog and chew it with your mask on. I'd rather have that than none, right? I'd rather have a beer with yeah. a straw than no beer at all. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I mean it, this is this is really the, you, you've got it, Sean. You've really got it, it and that's 
you can you can make these steps and you can open them up, um, but as long as you're not letting people make the choices, uh, that you're not moving back to normalcy. And is this my question? Is is this the new norm? Is this what people really think the new norm is going to be? So. So next year, if you have a massive flu epidemic, is this what's going to happen? Well, the, I think a flu new epidemic? norm has to be, we're not going to handshake. A new norm is going to be, if we have any risk of any pandemic, we shut down travel immediately. Travel bans aren't going to be called racist and xenophobic. Yeah. I think public-private partnerships are the future. Um, I think that uh, certainly... You know, working from home, like especially if you want to reopen New York City, I would say put half the workforce. They have to be home. You can make it work look, and keep jobs and keep the the city going. Yeah, look, our, our country's made accommodations before after after you know kind of events that change things. Uh, we'll we'll be able to do it again. I mean, I, I was at the White House the other day, and you they 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 take the temperature on on your right away. It takes like all of two seconds. So some of those things probably will have to change as you and Andy have talked about, but Americans can adapt. Americans are amazing people. We, we, I always say my favorite scripture verses where Paul says, fight the good fight, finish the course, keep the faith. We, it's an attitude, fight, finish, keep. That's the attitude that describes the American people. We'll get through this. We may have to make some changes just exactly like you've talked about, Sean, but I think we get through it, but let's get back to work as soon as we can. And All right, let me ask you this. How through. are we going to ever open a bar? How do you open a bar? How do you open a restaurant? That's not. I don't have the answers there. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I, I'm not sure either, but we'll figure it out. And and you know, look, is, will we have to have a little more space there? Will they have to check everyone's temperature before they walk in? I mean, I don't know. We'll leave that to some of the experts. But uh, like I said, we're Americans. We know how to adapt. We know how to to get through things. And I think we'll be uh, we'll be able to figure this one out as well. Some some interview with Dr. Fauci. They said, "How do you use these dating apps?" And he goes, "Well, you know." It's the amount of risk you're willing to take. I'm like, oh, great. That's, <laughs> I don't even want to go there. I, those, all, all these young people use these dating apps. They swipe left, they swipe right, and they meet a stranger, a total, complete nuthead stranger. That's how, I, that, that scares the hell out of me for, my, for kids. All right, I got to roll. Guys, thank you.